Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at our games versus Code Magic. Tomorrow we'll be bringing you guys uh, the games against Clash. But first off, we'll uh, just go over games against Code Magic. Some really good games, so definitely GG's to everyone at Code Magic. But uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you first off for 50k subscribers. An incredible achievement. I'm hoping I can continue growing. So thank you everyone for the support. Thank you everyone for watching my videos every single day. I hope... To bring you guys many more tips and many more uh, strategy guides and whatnot. So definitely let me know in the comment section below what videos you would like to see from me soon. Because I am moving uh, rooms soon. So I'm going to have a lot more time on my hands. I'm going to be able to provide much better uh, content for you guys. So yeah, definitely uh, let me know in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's jump into the first game. Alright guys, jumping into the first game. So it's Siege, Nuts and Bolts, the bands to note for this were Gale. And search so the generic bands that most teams go for. So uh, for this map, there's only really two options you could really go. It was either Gene Max Barley or it was a Sprout Barley Max. Or you could go for like a Sprout uh, counter comp with uh, tanks and whatnot. But we get a nice kill with uh, on the Cursor. So Sprout's a really good counter to Gene, but you've got to make sure that you focus near enough all these shots on the Gene. Else he's going to eventually get pulled and that's going to be able to, ta uh, uh, able to uh, counter you. Sorry, so... Uh, at a minute, it is a tie game, so they've got the better stance on things. But I don't think Cursor's got too many shots towards his super. And normally, as well, we do tend to use the uh, other Barley gadget. But we've gone for the heal one this time because it's really important in the uh, first siege bot uh, to get, uh, well, to get obviously get the first siege round. So that uh, gadget really helps you to stay alive and is really clutch in them moments where all your clock clumped up. You can just uh, use the Barley gadget and all you can heal up. So really nice kill on Twisty. Uh, by Semantic Bear. Uh, Tom actually struggling on his lane against Semantic, actually, uh, well, against some Bentley, sorry, going to super him back. Nice pinch from me and Semantic to get the Gene down. So they have got this round, but it's not the end of the world at all. We've actually got really bad defense, but look how many bolts we've got for the last round. As long as I can get a kill on some Bentley there, which I'm able to do. I remember the commentator's not even picking up on this, but I do manage to literally uh, save us around there. Got a kill on Gene. And the kill on Bali, so that literally just completely nullifies their attack. There's just no way they're going to be able to get any damage with them two kills. So, I mean, I've got to say, we played really well this one, but there would that was the moment where it completely clutched it up for us. Getting them two kills just, as I said, just completely killed their attack. And now, as long as all of us, well, at least a lot, just one of us are alive on the next push, we're going to be winning this game. So, a really strong start from us. I've got to say, from me personally, I'm leaving a team we weren't really... Uh, too nervous going into this game. Code Magic, obviously, probably the best team in the world, if not one of the best teams in the world. And, and normally in these games, you can be really nervous. It can be really stressful uh, going into all the preparation because obviously they're some of the best players in the world. But uh, just wasn't really feeling it too nervous in this one. So you can see a really good sprout wall by myself pushing Curse into the boss. A bit of fun, uh, but yeah, there's no way we're going to be able to lose that. So we're able to take the first game of the first set there with uh, the sprout comp. Really enjoying this comp. Let's go into the uh, next game. All right, guys, jumping into the next game of this set then. So we've had a complete switch around with comps. We've gone for Gene this time. They've gone for the Sprout. So again, it's all about the start. Can't really go mid against the Sprout at the beginning. I do get a really nice gadget on Twisted. We're able to near enough get him down. He has to run all the way back there. So uh, in the first uh, kind of engagement when you put against the Sprout, you basically got to use uh, both your ge uh, Gene gadgets, sorry, uh, to be really aggressive and get them first bolts. So... Uh, we have got the first siege bot there, which is really rare against the sprout. Normally, the sprout gets the first siege. Uh, but now I've got super and semantic has super. So, as I said, it's all about being aggressive with Gene when you're facing the counter. Are using your gadgets really well to build up your super. So, now I've got Paul going into the second uh, boss round. And uh, Tom's doing a really good job against some Bentley. So, Bentley's actually doing a good job to fight back with his aggression, getting his super. And you can see with the gadget, it's insane. He's near enough able to heal up fully. But. I get a pull on Twisty, not managing to finish off the kill then. Semantic barely goes down there. That was really frustrating. We could have got Twisty down there, but it does a good job to stay alive there. Some Bentley on 10 HP as well. It's kind of insane how all of these guys are literally only just surviving by the skin of the teeth. I do manage to go down there, but we still manage to clutch the round there. Semantic spawns back up. He's able to get a really nice super and a really nice dash, uh, and they're both able to kill Curse there. So going into the final uh, robot, we have three bolts to their five. We've got gene pool. We've got all the good positioning as long as we keep a bit of positioning. All of us not die, we're going to be good. So I get a nice pull on Sprout there. Uh, Kirsty gets some good shots on me, but I hit my pull. And uh, Smantic's able to uh, finish off the kill with me. So 
Uh, we've got radical position. Only need to collect two more bolts uh, to even tie it up. And even if we don't get the last round, we're still in a decent position. But we find a kill on Max there. Well, on Twisty, which is going to be really clutch. And then a pull curse. So it's basically the round to us. Uh, some really well held control from us. Getting all of the uh, siege bot uh, bots. And siege is one of our best modes. One of my favorite modes for sure. Because the meta really isn't that rock, paper, scissors on siege. I feel like there's only like a few comps you can go on siege maps. Uh, so it's one, it's one of my favorite modes. Because you just kind of uh, expect... Uh, what the opponent's going to go. So we're going to win the first set. Two to over against Code Magic. Let's hop into the next game. Okay, guys. So going into the second set. So normally we don't actually go this comp. The more generic comp that people go uh, is Bo, Pam, and Carl. Or Bo, Pam, and Rico. People are starting to go Rico on this map. So we decided to go with Sprout because we had a feeling that they might try a Rico on us. So Sprout's really good against Rico because it's squishy. But they brought out Mr. P, which Mr. P has been meta for a very long time but in this meta i think it's one of the first times i've faced him for a good few weeks on this map to be fair in the mid because it's actually hard for mr p to consistently hit his shot on stone fort uh, other maps he's going to be better on but in stone fort it's actually really hard to get your first super uh, in the middle so sprout's going to be pretty decent against mr p but once mr p gets porter it's basically a counter to sprout so uh son already got, got his minds but i managed to bait him out I knew if only one mine hit me, I could easily stay alive because I've got my gadget. I've got my shield. Uh, so really well played uh, to get Twisty down there as well. Um, Tom's doing a good job to get that uh, porter down. Curse probably should have put his porter further back uh, just because we just destroyed that basically straight away once we got some Bentley down. But he probably didn't expect, well, no, Twisty down, but he probably didn't expect for him to go down so soon. So again, I've got the uh, Pam Matura just constantly healing me. I've got the grass for my shield. I've got a gadget as well that can keep me alive. We are getting pressured a little bit though because obviously Sprout's not that good. Uh, up, up close and personal. Tom again getting a nice kill down the side. Smantic obviously. I don't really need to say how much of a beast he is with Pam. Everyone knows how good of a Pam he is. Constantly staying alive, playing really well. So another well-timed kill from me and Tom with a nice pinch on the bow. Uh, that makes it so we can activate the mines safely. So it's really vital for a bow to dominate on this map. Uh, Stonefort is literally all about bow mines uh, when Surge and Gale are banned. Literally, they're bow mines with the uh, gadget that basically instantly explodes them. It's just insane. It's so good for zoning, and especially if you get them in the choke points, either down left or right, or in the uh, top half. It's going to zone so much and control so much of the map. So we're able to pick up the first win in the second set there let's hop into the next one okay guys going into the second game of the second set then so code magic gone a really good comp but most people tend to go on this map as well perk on pam a really good pairing and then you've got the bow to constantly zone uh so basically against poco you're always going to have a rough start especially when you've got a bow as mid it takes a while for you to get your minds and poco's obviously got his gadgets at the beginning you're always going to get a slow start but smite it with really clutch kill on poco there felt like curse could maybe have finished me off i thought i was going to die but uh, he was reluctant to kill me there not too sure why but uh, nonetheless they've still got a lot of pressure i'm close to my minds here though uh, they've got all the pressure in the world though so gotta be careful cursed with the heal but managed to get a uh, stun on some bentley he's able to stay alive and then sun kind of panics and use his gadget and misses so tom recognizes that he can kill the bow there so you can see tom's running protected pirouette and uh, the main reason for that is just because um there's not a lot of brawlers in the meta in this current time in a competitive meta anyway uh, that have the stun uh well like the knockback ability to cancel call super so protected pirouette is really good in the, uh, the competitive meta for sure so you can see i've placed the bow mines it's forcing twisting curse to come all the way down this side maybe they should have just went back and just gone all the way back into the spawn and came forward. But now they've just worked into a pinch. I got my mines again and just instantly able to explode them on them. So, yeah, I felt like that was probably their biggest mistake there. They probably should have just gone back to spawn instead of trying to force it all the way around. Uh, because we had a matter of time, we nearly had the countdown. So, we needed to make something happen pretty quick. But uh, nonetheless, we're able to win that one again. So, turn it up at the minute against Code Magic. Obviously, they're a really good team, one of the best in the world. And we've just hit the uh, full front with things here. Just starting off really well. Let's hop into the third set. All right, guys. So jumping into the Brawl Balls set then. So uh, this is kind of a mirror comp here. So uh, the reason for this comp is because Poco Double Tanks are obviously really good on this map, especially. So the bees to kind of counter uh, that aspect. Uh, we've got the Max and the Pam, but just good against everything else. So maybe both teams could have gone something a bit more risky, like a Piper or a Nanny in mid to counter the B. 
But I feel like both teams didn't really want to risk things too much, especially in the first game. So really uh, balanced comp to go off the bat. So Cursed with a really nice dash, he's able to get a goal. That's one of the good things about Cursed and why he's one of the best players in the world. He's got some really good aggression moments. And as you can see there, just perfectly timing his aggression and able to score. So he's basically one of the only players in the world that I know can actually balance his aggression so, so well. So you can see Sun's doing a good job against me. I know I was really nervous in this game because uh, we were 2 0 up. We only needed to win this set and we'd won the game. So I was just really nervous in this one. So I had a definitely a slow start. But Bentley pushing up, probably a bit too aggro here. I get a nice shot on Cursed. He's only one shot. Twisty again, not too sure why he was so aggressive with that turret. Uh, I felt like we was definitely in a better position there. So I'm able to pop off there and basically get a triple kill, which again, the commentators didn't actually uh, pick up that. But uh, I, was, I was actually pretty happy with that in the moment, able just to pop off and completely kill the enemy with the team. So Son again with a nice shot on me. Tom's got his turret already. And uh, probably. People are probably wondering, oh, what was Tom on Pam and uh, Semantic on Max? But we like to switch things up. Uh, all of us can play uh, all three ballers. I'm probably not the best Max, not really advised me to go on Max. But I can play Pam and B. Uh, we like to, as I said, switch things up. Tom's a really good Pam. Semantic's a really good Max. So uh, they've both got different play styles. Semantic can be really good aggressive Pam. Tom can be a good passive Pam. So uh, that's why we're obviously for Tom on backyard ball. Just to be a bit more passive. But uh, there we go. We see Tom uh, get a goal there after some... Uh, good kills and some good opportunities uh, to score a goal. So it is one all in this current time. Uh, but as you can see, Twisted being really aggressive again. Uh, it's definitely really good to be aggressive on this map. We actually managed to get the kill there. Uh, you just got to match the aggression as a team. If you can all push the enemy team back all the way into spawn, you've got to be having a good ch uh, chance to win the game. So uh, going into overtime, it's literally a fair game. All the teams evenly set. We have actually got a pump turret up. So if anything, we're in a better position here. Some Bentley was tapped up once as well, but he's going to heal up slightly. So as I said, we're going to be in a better position. I'm not too sure where it entirely went wrong here. I'm just going to have another check here because I definitely did watch it back, but not too sure. I think it was because, yeah, uh, some Bentley got his 3k and just uh, completely melted Curse. That, uh, well, that's semantic there. So I think that's the one thing that actually cost us there. But as you can see, they cap capitalized really good. They're able to get the pressure and kill us all. So it's probably just some Bentley popping off towards the end there. They've just got some really good pressure as a team. But that's going to be that game there. We lose it. Let's hop into the next one. All right, guys, going into the next game then. So both teams gone for the mirror again. Uh, both teams are a little too, bit too scared to try and predict and counter the other. As I said, it's just a really safe option. And if it's a mirror match, especially on backyard bowl, it's going to be the team that obviously play better. So I uh, get a nice shot on some Bentley there. Tom on the max is basically a mirror match up in both senses, but I've burned down both lanes. Uh, I don't even know who's got a better matchup with Max and Pam. Pam could probably be a little bit more aggressive because she's got more HP. But at the same time, Max is going to be dealing more damage at a quicker rate. So I do get a nice shot on Twist down the lane. It forces him uh, back up. Again, I get a nice shot on some Bentley here. And with another 3k, I'm able to take him down. So this is where the uh, aggression starts. We can push up once we get a kill. I do get a nice slow on Curse, but he gets a nice dash back to save his life. So he's got a... Uh, He's got a super here. It's, they're able to then push out a spawn. I'll get a nice 3k on them there. I'm tapping them up completely. Doing a lot of dam damage. So tip with the dash in. He's able to get the double kill. And we're able to get the goal. Some, some really nice calculated aggression from all three of us there. All playing as a team. All able to pinch them down. Get them low and score. So again, literally really well played from all of us there. To get more down to some better league. He's going really aggro. He's got 3k shots. So that's his kind of time to go aggro. But... I do get these shots down on Twisty. That's probably one thing I need to focus a little bit more on, and I was doing so in this second game, is focusing on the lanes a bit more. I was getting too drawn into the fight with some Bentley, whilst there was just easy pickings down the left and right uh, with Pam and whatnot. So I'm able to get another nice kill on some Bentley. This game, I'm playing so much better than the last. I'm playing much more aggressive and playing much more the way I normally play B. I was just a bit too scared and apprehensive in the first game, but... And now I think Tom definitely went to aggravate. Should have placed the turret behind it. I've all said that as soon as he threw it. I thought I was a bit too aggressive. But uh, nonetheless, we're still in a decent position. Uh, but we, are, we are getting pinned back. And I felt like it. obviously if we kept that position, we would have been uh, in the safe hands. So we're going to get cursed down there. But as you can see, they've got some really good aggression. We're all pretty low while Semantic's low. Uh, Tom's going to get pinched. Some Bentley playing really well there. Getting Tom really, really low. Uh, as you can see, he gets a shot on Tom and then able to get a free counter turret. So take the turret down literally instantly. Some Bentley is popping off. Shot after shot, he's able to connect some, but I'm able to get a kill on him there. And then it's just me versus Cursed, which 
Uh, Matt's going to actually uh, shred me so easily and so quickly, but I get first to the ball and just super it out. So we're able to clutch up that game. I'll be one game away from uh, finishing off the whole series. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so jumping into the last game of this set. And so, again, both teams going for this. So it's really strange and competitive at the moment uh, for a team to go the same comp three games in a row. Forget the enemy team going three games in a row. So this is a very rare sight to see other than Siege, as I said. But that's some really good aggression from some Banley and Curse there. Again, they're not too scared to go aggressive, and it's definitely a weakness of us, especially on Backyard Bowl. It's one of their best maps, and for them to go really aggravating uh, actually uh, forces into a mistake there, uh, which is really good. So, Twisty's in a good position with the Pam turret. I should have definitely healed up, but I really wanted to get that Pam turret out of there. And as you can see, even though they died, they're just able to get straight back up. Uh, with tw it was only Twisty alive. I felt like we could definitely have pinched him down much quicker than that. Maybe I should have healed up. Maybe we should have just worked together to pinch him out. But uh, nonetheless, they're able to score. So, uh, yeah, as I said, they played really aggressive this game. And it definitely worked into their favour. Uh, they kept switching up the playstyle every single game in probable. So, it was definitely really weird to see. I actually get a nice 3k shot on some Bentley there. But he's able to shoot me back. I get another nice 3k shot on Twisty, forcing him to go back. But he's got his pump turret. And he's got his gadget. They're able to heal up and then straight away. And look at all of us. We're all... Uh, really, really weak. All of us are literally close to 1k HP. Curse with his speed, and they're all full HP, so we're in a really tough spot. I do get a nice uh, slow uh, on Curse there, but some really good pressure. They're literally all in the prime position to score here. Tom does go down, but we live to fight uh, for now. I'm slowly getting chipped away and managed to kill Curse. I managed to get a clutch slow on Twisty, but he somehow gets to the ball and slots, slots that in. So it's a really nice play from these guys. Uh, they're completely outplayed as improbable. Let's hop right into the next set. All right, guys, jumping into the next set, which is Bounty Layer Cake. So the comp what we run near enough all the time in scrims is Bow Double Thrower. So uh, seeing Mortis from us is a really rare sight. I remember Art picking up on it straight away. There was like Mortis from Tribe. Like They've never run this, but uh, that's one thing that we needed to do. Even though we were 2-1 up, we're always seen as a team to kind of play it cautious, a bit too cautious, whereas uh, Code Magic are normally the ones to switch it up and just make the play. So uh, I remember last night saying we, sh we should just go Mortis because obviously no one uh, norm normally expects us to go Mortis. So we're able to get the complete counter comp, to be honest. There's no way they should actually be able to win this game unless Mortis just makes some crazy plays and he's able to kill me constantly. But Jackie's there to protect me against the Mortis. But as you see, Semantic's going to go in there. I've got a clutch heal. Twisty's going to be on me. And somehow Curse and some Bentley are basically 4 HP. And they're able to take down Tom. So as long as Semantic gets out alive there, we're going to be in good hands. So and Tom's going to go straight back up to map. He has got super, so it's time for him to get some really good value. He's going to try and get his bats on all three of them. Does actually fail. Uh, but then again, I'm not going to say fans, uh, the throwers are definitely focusing way too much on Semantic. Uh, they need to really focus on me. I know there's a jack in their face, but they need to throw some shots onto me because I'm just going up there uncontested and just healing Semantic whenever I need to. I'm never in a low position. And when I'm in a low position, I'm just able to get a heal. So Semantic and Tom with some really good aggression, as always. And as I said, we've literally got a counter comp to them. Uh, normally, the comp uh, that people do go are like a Brock with double thrower or a Boba double thrower to counter the tanks. But uh, they definitely thought we are going Bow and Mortis definitely would have countered that comp. So uh, Tom going in really aggro there. Uh, you can see he's staying alive, which is pretty crazy. His shots just rain him down on him constantly. Uh, there's no way a Mortis can really do anything as long as Jack is staying there. Sometimes it's just going to go up and die. There's no way we're going to lose this game. So uh, a bit unfortunate for Code Magic. Uh, just a, literally a complete counter comp. There should have been no way we lost that one. So let's hop right into the next bounty game. All right, guys, going into the next bounty game. So we've gone with our generic comp that we tend to go near enough all the time in scrims. It's a pretty bulletproof comp and you'll see why in this game. So... Uh, we've got bow double thrower so uh double throw is going to be really good against tanks still as long as the sprout stays in the grass all the time he's got his gadget there's literally nothing uh the other team can do until all of my gadgets are gone he's just basically like a mini throwing tank uh i'll just stay alive for so long as a sprout but the main job here is for semantic to protect tom so uh, semantic not really having a chance to defend him in that uh, opportunity because Twisty just needs to get two dashes on the tick, which is really easy to do because ticks obviously low HP and get the uh, gadget off. So really nice play from Twisty again. He's going to go in for Tom like straight away. So uh, Twisty being so so aggravated, even on 3k HP, he was looking for an opportunity 
to get a kill. So Tickhead's going to be pushing him back there, able to get that down. And immediately Twisty goes in for another kill on Tom. But some really nice uh, placed and well-timed uh, bow mines from Semantic. So as you can see here, there's actually a bow mine glitch. Uh, sometimes when you place your mines and instantly explode them, one mine uh, actually stays remaining. So Twisty didn't actually know that. And as you can see, that comes straight away to bite him in the back there. So... I mean, Twisty must have been wondering why uh, Semantic and Tom were just sitting there, but it was a really nice bait. I remember VC uh, actually laughing about that because it was really unfortunate for them. Uh, it does happen a lot of the times, and it's just one of the things where you've probably got to look at and take more interest in. Uh, I don't know if it's a glitch or not, but uh, nonetheless, uh, again, Tom and Semantic just going to be sitting on the bow mines. I don't necessarily need to sit on their mines just because, as I said, I've got all my gadgets. There's not really a chance for me to die. Uh, and his opportunities but twisty literally this game's just been a pinch fest just twisty constantly going in for the kill on tom and cursed and some bendy not really doing too much but we're able to get the kill on twisty there and as you can see cursed nearly gets the kill on semantic but we nearly get the kill on him and we're able to pick up the win inside of our one okay guys it's going to be the end of today's video it's took me a while to actually uh, upload this one just been feeling really drained today and it's literally took me, it's literally 8 o'clock right now. And that's when I finished. And our game's finished hours and hours ago. So finally getting around to recording these games. Sorry for the late upload. But hope you guys enjoyed. Anyway, as I said, I'll be uploading the Clash side of things tomorrow. And then going into Monday, the new season. I'll probably be grinding my way up on ladder again. I've got a month until monthly finals. So a lot of time on my hands is going to be trying to push ladder. The meta is much more fun on ladder. So I'll definitely be pushing there. So... I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Do all that good stuff and I'll see you guys later.